Um, okay, I want to talk about today um, tune shading, um, which is making stuff look like a cartoon. Um, I'm going to take a scene we have here um, with a character that's vaguely Mega Man-ish. Um, there's one spotlight on it, and if you look at it, it's got some very simple shading on it. Um, a cartoon shader is a shader designed to make it look like something has been drawn like a cartoon rather than rendered in 3D. Uh, it consists of at least two parts. One part is the shader on the actual object, and then another part is a shader on the camera. So we'll look at camera shaders as well. Um, I'm going to take the guy's head, uh, let's do it this way his head and his hands, like that, Oop. hand, hand, and head, and we'll grab his eyes too, yeah. good, and let me just get that other eye, yeah, we'll use that as well, and I'm going to, I doubt it's over under my materials. Oh no, it is. I'm going to put this thing called Tune Paint on it. Uh, I'm gonna pull a render region before I do. So we're looking at that. Um, I might wanna move my light too so we get a better view of him. Uh, let me just look through the spotlight and we'll put more direct light on him. Good. Now, Material, tune paint. Those went, his head didn't go. Why didn't his head go? Let's find out. Uh, well, probably I didn't have it selected, I bet. No, I got him selected. Let's pick his head and we'll take a look down here in the render tree what's going on with his head. Oh, that's why, I have to take this out of the way. Good, and now Let's tune paint his head. I'll go under material. I'm going to go to tune paint. Okay, so right away you can see what it does. If you think of cartoons, there's a highlight area and there's a shadow area. And if I move my light, watch what happens. It changes where those areas are being drawn. See that? I have to do his eyes too now that I think about it. Ah. Let me go in here and I'm going to pick those eyes. Eye and eye. And let me put that, I'm going to just drop the shader right back on it again. Tune paint. Good. Now, let's look at the shader. Um, ambience is if there's a shadow color involved. This should make it a little darker. Maybe way darker. And perhaps I want to put another spotlight on them. We'll decide that. Uh, let's try it like that. We'll turn a little bit this way. Good, that's sort of spooky looking. Um, my basic color. Let's say he's going to be blue. Uh, like that. Um, highlights. If he has a specular highlight, let me turn on glossy. Yes, that gives me three levels rather than two levels where it changes. Uh, and I can decide what I want that glossy to be. Let's make it a glossy blue. Uh, let's make it, you know what, let's go back here maybe. Yeah, we'll back it up that way to make it slightly blue tinged like that. Yes, I like that. Oh, well, let me open that shader again. Um, I'm on his head. I'm going to reload this down here. Ah, two objects selected. I'm going to go on his head, reload that. This is my tune paint shader. Let me pick his eyes separately. Eye and eye. Good. And I'll back out here. Um, I'm going to open this up. Rim light. Will rim light do anything for me? Let's see. Yes, it will. It creates something that looks like it's coming in from the sides there. See that? Um, now, that is the thing that makes it look like it's colored. 
um, as if you were drawing it. It's not the thing that makes it look like you drew it with a pen. That's a separate shader that's involved with this shader. Uh, I have to take my camera. Let me go over here. I'm going to go back to a top view. And I'm going to hit a 8 key and find my camera. Camera, camera, camera. There's my camera. Nope, here's my camera, actually. And I'm going to load it down here in the render tree. That's my camera. Um, if I double click this, there's a place I can put the shaders. If I go add, I don't think it has the choice here, which is kind of annoying. So I have to pull it out from over here. Um, if I look over here, I can do a search on this. I want to say tune, actually. Tune ink lens. I'm going to take this shader here and I'm going to pipe this into the camera shader and watch what happens. See that? It's like that little outline you see on Bugs Bunny and all those folks like that. Do you notice it takes longer to render because it's a fairly involved shader? Um, if I open it up, it has a lot of choices in it. Um, I can uh, change the color of the outline. Let's say it was going to be a bright yellow outline, sort of like SpongeBob. I can do that. Uh, what else do we got here? Taper changes it so it looks like it's drawn, like with a pen and a thickening edge. It's maybe a little bit too much taper for my tastes. Try something like that. Basically, you can play with all of these and get different results. Sampling is an interesting one. If you turn down sampling, the quality of it looks more ragged. I'll show you what I mean. Do you see how it gets some roughness? And if I go in on it, you'll see that even more so. Let's see what Trace Desk does as well. And then if you look at that as compared to something like this, if you look along these edges, you'll see that they're much more uh, full, they're smoother. That's what that does. Um, ah, this is sort of interesting. Um, you can decide what parts are actually outlined. For example, if I do facets, watch what happens. I'll actually put an outline on every single polygon. which is sort of strange looking, but might be interesting sometimes. Um, let's, I wonder what Merge Coplanar does. If they're on the same plane, it won't draw on them, which means the head should still have lots of them. But the other surfaces won't. Let's turn that guy off. Um, exactly what it will show lines on, if I turn off material, we have one material for the head here and a different material for the hands. Um, I'm going to let this draw and then we will, um, I'm going to turn off material so you'll see we should be missing lines. Let me see if I'm right about that. We should be missing the lines inside here after that, hopefully. Come on. Well, it got rid of some of them. Got rid of the ones on the eyes anyway. I probably would have to put different tune shaders on these other objects to get them uh, to break down. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, I'm going to close this, and I don't think we'll see this in a um, high quality view. I'm going to save before I do this because I might regret it if I don't. Uh, we'll call this Tune 2. Okay. Now I'm going to go to. Um, High quality. I don't think it's going to work. It's trying. Might be working. Up. Oh, doesn't work. 
That's good, I expected that. And actually it's having some meta SL problem. That's fine, I can still see it over here without any big issue, as you can see. Now I wanna make that shader, um, I'm gonna go back to tune ink lens here. I wanna make that shader lose these edges um, on the arm, so let me close that and I'm gonna select the objects that make up my arms. One, two, three, four. And I'll, yeah, control Z that. And I will get the other arm. Uh, okay. Um, and I'm gonna put a new uh, tune shader on them. So let me pull a render region. Now I'm gonna go under material. I'm gonna go under um, tune host or tune paint. Actually I'm gonna pick tune paint and host. And that should mean there's a new shader on these guys. It's gonna to try to render it. They should be gray. Good. That's a start. I still have that outline, but we'll worry about that outline momentarily. Let me give them a better color Okay, uh, I can go back to my tune, you know, let's turn on its ambience. And actually I'll turn on the highlights too. Good, and I'm gonna make its highlight bluer, like that maybe, let's see what that is. Oh, yes. Yeah, I sort of like that. Okay. Um, Seams, let's see what seams are doing. Host blend objects. I'm hoping I can get rid of the, um, the edges in between, but I would play around with that. And if I wanna modify the, um, the outline, I have to do that through the lens. Uh, let's turn that down. Let me turn my tapering down, make those lines smaller. Yes. And that's a rough way of doing that. Okay, if you're interested in trying it, pick an object, stick it on, and then if you want to get the outlines, you attach this other shader to the camera lens. And that should be enough to get you going on tune shading.